Thank you. Um, what causes cavities and does fruit cause cavities? And also, what do you do about bad breath? So what causes cavities? Does fruit cause cavities? And what do you do about bad breath? I'm going to jump in here because there's actually a thing that correlates with Western Price that we talked about earlier. Um, it was uh, there was a conference called, and they all the researchers that were really leading different areas of research at the time in what causes a cavity came presented their research. There were three different three different models that were presented. One is called the acidogenic theory, which says if acid is on the tooth, it dissolves the tooth, and you get a cavity. The second was a nutrition theory. It was actually Dr. Weston Price that came and presented it. And he said, I believe that if you feed the tooth or feed the body enough nutrients that you can actually create a cavity resistant tooth. Doesn't matter what you put on the tooth, it won't create a cavity. And there was a third study um, that showed that hormone changes actually changed the fluid flow inside of the tooth. So when hormone changes, when hormones changed in the body, the body required more nutrients. And so it actually pulled nutrients from the tooth into the body rather than the opposite direction. So all three of these theories were presented. There was a vote taken and the one that was voted on was this acidogenic theory. That's the one that everybody knows. So what do you know? What, is, what, would, what did your mom tell you, right? If you brush, if you don't brush your teeth or if you eat too much sugar, you're going to get a cavity. That's what you were taught. That's what we were all taught. And it makes sense. What actually does happen is when a bacteria stays on your tooth, this is why we want to clean them off. When it stays on your tooth, it eats your sugar. It eats sugar. Does sugar cause the cavity? No. Bacteria causes the cavity. Bacteria excretes, or basically I tell kids that poops out acid. <laughs> so the bacteria <laughs> eats the sugar, it poops out acid, and that acid actually dissolves the minerals from your tooth. Here's the problem. It doesn't always happen this way. I will see families and I'll see a whole family. I'll mom, dad, kids. Mom comes in, she's got a mouthful of cavities and she's so frustrated because she says, I brush and I floss and I do everything you people tell me to do. And I still have a mouthful of cavities. Dad comes in, not a, not a cavity in sight. And mom's furious because she's like, he knows, he doesn't even know what floss is. He doesn't even own a toothbrush, you know, but yet he doesn't have a cavity. And then the kids are a mixed bag. Some of the kids have cavities. Some of them don't. So if the only way that a cavity can form is because of acid on the tooth, then why does mom have cavities and dad doesn't? right? It doesn't make sense. So I, a hundred percent, it's acid that causes it, but you can have a cavity resistant tooth. You can have a tooth that will literally push this acid off. You also can rebuild your tooth and add minerals so that it will become resistant as well. But the key is sugar feeds bacteria, which create acid. That acid dissolves a mineral and makes a hole in the tooth. Well, when there's a hole in the tooth, bacteria crawl into it. Bacteria then eat more sugar, they create more acid. It creates a deeper hole. They crawl deeper and deeper into the tooth. And that's how a cavity progresses. That is the truth. That's the acidogenic theory. However, you also can prevent cavities completely through nutrition. Vitamin D3, vitamin K2. This is proven by research. Um, you can actually prevent as well as hydroxyapatite, which Dr. Cotola talked about. If you have teeth that are fully strengthened by nutrients, they can be resistant to decay. Does that mean you should be eating you know, are drinking, you know, five uh, gallons of soda a day? No, absolutely not. <laughs> you know, any acid is going to create a problem. You know, moderation again, but it's not just the acid. It's also what is your tooth and what is your body doing to defend itself from the acid? So the, the, um, the latest research that has emerged um, from, uh, I think it was University of Montana, Bozeman campus, which um, had probably done some of the best oral microbiome research in the, in the country, um, showed that there's something called the dentothialomicrobial complex. There are teeth, saliva, and um, um, microbes, right? The microbiome. And when, they, when you have a balanced oral microbiome, I sound like a broken record. When you have a balanced oral microbiome, you can go to an Italian wedding and, uh, and have a lot of uh, pasta and, and sugary desserts, which shifts the pH of the mouth, which promotes the overgrowth of acidophilic, acidophilic or acid loving bacteria that M Michelle was speaking about that poop out uh, acids. Um, you, uh, you can have all that, but, but because the terrain is balanced, 
you're able to shift. So I'm just going to show something. Um, this is a chart. This looks like a bullseye. And, and, and you can see that the balance of the oral microbiome is in the middle of the target. So I don't know if that's in focus or not. And it's kind of like a level, you know, when the level is out and you see the bubble goes one way or the other way. If the microbiome is strong and healthy and balanced, you, uh, that is your best way to prevent the onset of both decay, which is hard tissue, and periodontal disease, which is soft tissue. So when it's out of balance and it's really, um, it goes to a more hypertrophic state, which is the thick, smelly film, that creates uh, an opportunistic environment for tooth decay and gum disease. And conversely, and this is important, when you try to strip it all away, which, you know, there are a lot of people, you know, oh, use truckle and use this and da da and xylitol and da da and they try to strip it, um, you get what's called an atrophic um, biofilm or microbiome. And that makes you prone to both tooth erosion, um, a weak enamel, and also um, a lot of sensitivity with the gums. And, um, and, and um, you get a, it's kind of like a desert. So one is a jungle, scary jungle. The other is a desert. These are very important factors in the ideology or the origin of both um, tooth decay and gum disease. And that's the latest, this dentocyala microbial complex. When in balance, you get mineralization, you get oxygen to the gums, you get um, waste products, reactive oxidative species taken away. And when it's out of balance, you get demineralization, you get hypoxia, which is a lack of oxygen because you get an overgrowth of a thick, sticky film on your teeth. And that becomes very conducive to disease. I saw a question pop up that I think is good to answer. Uh, it said, uh, does adding lemon juice to your water lead to tooth decay? Well, any acid in the mouth is going to lead to dissolution of minerals. So it's going to pull minerals out of the tooth. Any acid will do it. And if you're drinking lemon water, water with lemon added to it nonstop, then yes, you are going to have the problem in the mouth. Exactly what Dr. Kripal is talking about is there's a pH balance, pH the pH level that needs to stay in the mouth. And when we eat, that pH naturally drops with food we eat, any food we eat, even if it's not acid containing, that's part of the digestive process. And the saliva then brings the pH back up to neutral and that's where teeth do, do no, no longer dissolve. The problem comes if you're constantly adding either food of any variety, but particularly acid food to your mouth. So this is why when somebody says, ah, I hardly drink any soda at all. I just have one can and I nurse it all day long. It's the worst thing you could possibly do <laughs> because every Agreed. time, every time you swallow another swallow, you're dropping the pH in the mouth and minerals are being pulled out of the tooth. So you can have lemon in your water. Absolutely. That's great. Do it first thing in the morning because we know that that alkalizes the body and then be done with it. You don't add lemon to every single swallow of water you have throughout the entire day. Otherwise you're going to be dropping the pH and pulling minerals from the tooth constantly. So yeah. honestly, a lot of these things are understanding the underlying principle. It's underlying what is that? Absolutely. Tooth? Acid pulls minerals from the tooth. Okay, so if you don't want to have minerals pulled from your tooth, you shouldn't put acid on the tooth often. It's just understanding the principle, and then you can make your own decisions based on what the principle tells you. Oh, so yeah, Michelle, to... I'm I'm really glad I'm glad really glad um, Dr. Jorgensen brought that up because um, there are people I've had patients, I'm sure you as well, Michelle, that that they um, they drink Perrier and they're like, look, no sugar and this, but it's carbonic acid. And they are literally doing exactly what you said. So everybody listening, um, just because you're drinking, uh, you know, a hint, hint or Stelza and you're not drinking the 42 grams of sugar or whatever it is in Coca-Cola, um, you can still get decay because of that shift in pH because carbonation, that fizzy stuff, turns to carbonic acid. And um, so... Uh, you again are, you know, in the right church, wrong pew, because you're um, you're you're not taking sugar, so you're not really um, feeding um, what could be a um, a Molotov cocktail of bacteria that will um, um, be acidophilic, acid loving, but you are uh, in the wrong pew because the carbonation is a dangerous thing as well. This goes so, for so the right, moderate. So 
So if you diet you know, you're soda, drinking a right? diet soda with, with no sugar in it, well, it still has phosphoric acid or citric acid, depending on the soda of choice, and they all have carbonic acid. So it's just acid, 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 acid dissolves minerals. Minerals <clears throat> dissolved from your tooth lead to bacteria crawling in and a tooth and to tooth decay. And what about fruit? So fruit is a sugar. It's sugar and it's acidic, both. Is it a problem? Well, it is if you're eating sugar and fruit, if you're eating fruit that has sugar and acid in it nonstop. It's just thinking about what does it do to your mouth? Again, principles. You eat sugar, you eat the fruit. So I had, I started my morning off with the fruit smoothie and an apple. So is this bad for my teeth? Well, no, because I didn't continue eating that throughout the entire day. My mouth, my saliva did its job. It brought the pH back up to neutral. My body was able to neutralize this acidic attack. Everything was fine. But if I continued to eat the fruit nonstop, that's when the problem comes. Just understand the principles behind it. It's the acid attack and how frequently are we doing it that leads to the decay. Right. If so and, and, and there, Steve, we really haven't given you much time to talk. Okay. <laughs> it, if, we, if we do have fruit, should we brush our teeth right after or does it not make a difference? No, you should not brush no. right after because no. <laughs> what you've done with any acid, and this is what I tell pregnant moms who are throwing up a lot, anything like this, or someone who's drinking coffee, even the coffee as an acid, is acidic as well. As soon as you've drunk or eaten something that's acidic, what you've done is actually softened the surface of the tooth. You've softened the minerals, you've softened that tooth. And so that's the worst time to brush is right after you've consumed something acidic. You need to allow your slice, so you need to rinse with water, raw with nothing in right. it. You need to rinse with water, rinse whatever is in your mouth out of your mouth, and then you're gonna allow the saliva to bring it up to neutral pH again before you're gonna brush your teeth. So the worst time to brush is right after an acid attack or an acid eat right. an acid meal. Do, do yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I agree totally. A lot of people make that mistake. They're like, oh, I'll run to the bathroom and brush. And that's not what you wanna do for exactly um, what 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 um, Dr. Jorgensen shared. Um, the other um, thing that I wanted to add is that it's important to understand a glycemic index in fruit because blueberries have a low glycemic index and are loaded with nutrients and vitamins that are going to be better for you than pineapple, which, by the way, has some great enzymes, but very, very high sugar as well. And then you have the melons, you know, the melons, you know, some melon, uh, cantaloupe, honeydew, has a lower glycemic index. Watermelon is soft with sugar. Um, but somebody just asked about electrolytes, electrolyte drinks, and I want to respond to that as well. It's just important in electrolyte drinks. Uh, I mean, I know, especially post-workout and all electrolyte drinks can be very, um, very, especially when you're dehydrated, electrolyte drinks are very, very important. Important to look at sugar content, and it's important that they're not carbonated. Um, but uh, electrolyte drinks are not problematic when there is not high sugar and they're taken appropriately. Um, what about nuts or salt? Do either of them have any impact on our teeth or our cavities? They're not acidic, but they're, any food is gonna lower the pH in the mouth. So if you're just putting something in your mouth nonstop, you never allow the saliva to neutralize the pH again. There has to be a pause between food consumption. Any food, doesn't matter the food, is going to lower the pH in the mouth. So you just can't, you just can't be constantly putting something in there. It never allows the mouth to neutralize again. Okay. What what yeah, about no, bad, no. what about bad no, what? breath? What should people do about bad breath? So bad bad breath is another classic microbiome imbalance, right? You have an overgrowth of um, odor-causing bacteria that love, and as, as Dr. Jorgensen pointed out, the dorsal surface of the tongue. And, um, and, and this is often fed by certain, you know, certain diets can also cause an overgrowth of that. Um, but bad breath is, is a classic um, microbiome imbalance. And what we know right now, and recent uh, discoveries, is two bacteria actually that were identified as being out of balance in the microbiome that are directly responsible for bad breath. So it is an imbalance. These are bacteria that normally live in the microbiome. So it's not about killing them or camouflaging, which is the big approach for years and years and years. And, you know, the biggest obsession in dentistry was bad breath and white teeth. You know, that, that, those are the two big obsessions. People didn't really get it that both of those can be accomplished 
when you have a healthy oral microbiome, oral microbiome because the staining of teeth, in addition to bad breath, happens when things are out of balance and you have an overgrowth of mucopolysaccharides and other compounds on the surface of the teeth that absorb stain very quickly. So bad breath, stained teeth, all of that can be really um, addressed effectively um, with a promoting a balanced microbiome, but one proviso, there are some cases of bad breath. Obviously, if you're eating a lot of garlic, it will emanate from your skin, not just, not just your mouth, uh, you know, onions and garlic and various dietary differences. Um, and the other is, you know, gastric disorders. Gastric disorders um, can uh, precipitate bad breath. What else can precipitate bad breath? Ketogenic diets, <laughs> you know, and that's really, you know, it's been very popular for weight loss, keto, keto, keto. And I think it's, I think it's, um, whereas in an, in a short term basis, it, you could see benefits long term, I think, very destructive to the teeth, creating acetone compounds in the mouth and other problems. Okay, what do we do to keep our gums healthy and to avoid pockets and whatever happens bad to our gums? Well, the main thing that's it's all microbiome, the doctor, <laughs> doctor can tell us what we're talking about. But uh, the key key component is to keep debris off the teeth. Uh, once there's tartar, basically what tartar is, is it's just calcified bacterial bacteria plaque that stayed there. So if the bacteria plaque does not get removed, it will calcify. That calcification turns into what we call tartar. That's very difficult to get off of your own teeth and your gums hate it. And the bacteria move in. I like to think of tartar as bacterial condos. So they move into these condos that are living on your teeth and they dump their garbage. They have parties all day long. They dump the garbage all over the gums. <laughs> gums go away the gums shrink back they're like i don't like this garbage i'm gonna go i'm gonna go away so the key is to keep the teeth clean that's the starting point and to make sure that the bacteria in the mouth are balanced and that you have uh, appropriate basically care this is why dr Cotillo talked about doing a quarterly cleanings because those bacteria remove into condos every 90 days there's new condo <laughs> every 90 days so if you continue, if you clean out the condos and you wipe away all the tenants every 90 days, then you're never going to have to, uh, you're never going to have gums pulling away, bone pulling away because of the garbage those tenants drop.